Thank you for downloading The Luminous Mind, episode 27. Spend enough time on yourself in the morning. Yeah, you're going to put yourself together physically, but mentally. So spend enough time on yourself in the morning to forget about yourself the rest of the day. Benjamin Franklin once said, Do not curse the darkness, rather light a candle instead. If you are ready to set your mind on fire, then prepare yourself for the Luminous Mind with your host, Rebecca Bowman. Today's fire starter is Lita Green. Lita Green speaks, entertains, and inspires audiences to embrace what makes us individually hot and amazing. As an image consultant and makeup artist for almost 20 years, Lita has helped clients to not only look their best, but to feel their best. Her message is about insecurities we all face and not how to only change them, but what we can do about them each and every day. I am so glad we have edit in my podcast. <laughs> Do you want to start over? <laughs> nope, nope. I go ahead and we oh, edit no, I out. Said that. Okay, <laughs> edit will... that out. <laughs> <laughs> it will be great. So, so welcome, Lita. Thank uh, you for having me, Rebecca. I told her that I'm just super bummed that we aren't watching her live because you have to get on and watch her TED Talks because it is super funny. And I'm afraid that an audio podcast isn't going to do her justice. But can you just tell us how you got your beginning with this idea of hotness and what that is all about? Well, I, like every woman, am born with perfect confidence and uh, perfect (laughs) awareness of who I am and what my value to the world is. You know, ha ha, just in case anyone thought I was serious. I um, had a grandma used to tell me that I was ugly and that nobody would love me. And because she was my grandmother and an authority figure in my life, I believed her. And of course, I looked in the mirror and I didn't match up to other women that I saw in the media that were put out as beautiful. And I didn't match up to my blonde, petite sister. And so clearly I was ugly. And, you know, we all want to be hot. We all want to be desirable. And over the years of working with women in their beauty, I meet with clients, you know, face to face and over Skype. But, you know, very early in my career, I was sitting across from this lady who I was very, really intimidated. She was a newscaster, and if she liked the makeup work that I did, I would have a regular gig doing her makeup. So I really wanted her to, to like what I did, and she was just really pretty. And, you know, here I am, the, the ugly trucker's daughter, right? <laughs> That's how we see ourselves. And, you know, I had had these times where I had the red rashy skin and a lot of stitches and didn't have all of my front teeth and, you know, just some awkward years. Yeah. So all of that is what I'm thinking about is I'm trying to do her makeup and I did her makeup and I was really pleased. And of course I'd done my research. So I knew what had been done on her before. And I felt like this was a great improvement. Of course she was going to hire me. And she says, Oh, look at my ugly nose. I am so ugly. Oh, what's up with my eyes? Why are they like this? And what I'm completely shocked because everything she's talking about I hadn't seen as a problem that's interesting and then I had this moment of she's got the same root up mentality that I had because by this point I had learned to see myself as beautiful and uh, that's a whole other story it's basically an awareness that we are beautiful and amazing simply because we're us and we are we need to not look at a six foot two felt you know doesn't have an ounce of fat on her you know, opposite of us and we're, you know, short and dowdy or whatever we describe ourselves to be, we're still beautiful. Yeah. We're just different. And this idea of what beauty is is so limited and so, you know, the ironic thing is my sister, who's a completely different body type than I am in coloring, my husband's not attracted to her. That's interesting, huh? (laughs) He actually is attracted to me. And my brother-in-law is not attracted to me. He's attracted to his to my sister, his wife. And I, you know, I joke that makes family reunions less awkward, you know, <laughs> but does their love for each other minimize my husband and my love for each other? And of course we know that's not the point, but by the time most of us women are into getting married or becoming moms, we've so entrenched what I call poopy talk Ooh, yeah. in our brains that we have just just like poop that just comes up and farts it just happened and these are all moms so they can handle the strong language of using the fart word you know 
You guys can handle that. So, uh, you know, we have to train our children what to do with their snot and their poop and their farts, right? <laughs> yes. So why are, why are we any different? And these ideas that we are not beautiful is from he who is poopy and stinky, not he who is awesome. Yeah, exactly. And we have to minimize those poopy thoughts and retrain ourselves into seeing ourselves as amazing. And because, again, your audience is moms, I love it when I get to talk to moms because would you say the things you say to yourself that you say, would you say that to your child? Oh, no. When you're standing in front of the mirror, would you be like, wow, you're fat to your kid? But you say it to you. And the reason that grandma said poopy things to me is because it was a reflection of what she thought about herself. Yeah. It had very little to do with me. Sadly, it took into my 20s to, to fully get her talk out of my head. But, you know, that's a lot of time that I could have been building my talents and my abilities that I was worried about how ugly I was. But I'm really just different, and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. We need so, to really focus on those differences. You know, as every woman wants to be hot, and, you know, as I'm a makeup artist and image consultant and this is something that women want, you know, and I tell them they look hot and they'd be like, what? I don't like that. No, I don't. You know, I realized, you know, that at the same time, there's this idea that, you know, with our feminine power, mm. our witty brains and our sharp tongues that we can burn people. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And as I'm trying to help a woman feel that she's beautiful and amazing. I can't force that heat on her. I'll burn her, even though my intentions are good. So there's two kinds of heat that we women have. The kind of heat and hotness that like a wildfire burns out of control, wild, loud, and flashy, it's a lot of attention. But people run from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure gets a lot of attention, though. The media is all over it. And ironically, a campfire is molecularly hotter than a wildfire because it's control in control and it's contained. That's true. And so, you know, the image of my, me may not be all over the internet in my bikini because th- I burned all those pictures, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I put forward this idea to women to let's be campfires, that we are in control of our thoughts or control of our actions, and that we put off a warmth that is so secure and sustaining to others that they are drawn to us to feel of that security and sustenance and warmth that we uniquely can provide. My yeah. husband doesn't love me because I look like Kim Kardashian, though I do have dark hair and <laughs> olive skin. He doesn't love me because of my similarities to her. He loves me because I love him and how I make him feel and how I treat him. Yeah. And I've been fat and pregnant and fat, and he still loves me. <laughs> and he's seen me without makeup on. <gasps> and he still loves me because... Only a shallow man only loves a woman for just her appearance. Yeah. Well, and as a as a makeup artist and an image consultant, have you noticed? I mean, you just talked about how you worked with you know this beautiful newscaster and what she felt about herself. Um, doesn't that come out? I mean, when we feel really cruddy about ourselves, it does make its way out, right? Regardless of oh, how beautiful we are, like a, like a fart, it just comes. <laughs> you put that in, you eat too many poopy beans, and there you go, right? And we all have those thoughts, and I make that funny analogy because you know no matter how good you feel about yourself you still have to keep up on our positive thinking you know zig ziglar said you know motivations like bathing we recommend it daily right <laughs> exactly but as an image consultant you actually do not need to wash your hair every day it actually makes it more oily so yeah. but just you know it's a good quote <laughs> so um you know we have to refine that and so i have an exercise that i teach my clients um, you know, through my speaking or through the, the beauty work that I do. And I call it vanity prayers. And vanity prayers is when you go to the bathroom and typically where we're looking at the mirror and we're checking out the love around our middle or whatever it is that we don't like about ourselves. Instead of saying, ah, oh, about us, I kind of have some theme music going in my head, you know? <laughs> and I walk in there and I'm like, I look great. I'm fabulous. <laughs> I'm going to love and I'm going to serve and I'm going to connect. And I look at my schedule that I have that day, and I see me being awesome. I see me being awesome at everything. I plan on being awesome. I see me really connecting with my kids. My kids get home at 3.30 because I'm not an overachiever like your listeners. <laughs> I send my children off to be corrupted, and then I work on the deprogramming when they get home. No. <laughs> um, I so respect homeschoolers. My children would um, think ADD was how to learn. <laughs> but um, I... 
you know, when they come in that door, I give them eyeball to eyeball time. And, you know, kids don't need too much of eyeball to eyeball time as long as it's really connected and real. And so I see me being an amazing businesswoman, an amazing wife, an amazing daughter, an amazing mom. And so I plan on being awesome. And if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? Yeah. So we get dressed and we put all this image, all this work into our image and not as much into our brains. And our brains do not have a sense of humor. They do not know the truth, the difference between a truth and a lie. They believe our subconscious mind, whatever we tell it. And neural pathways in our brains are created like ruts to a wheelbarrow, that it's hard to change those thoughts. And the only way to change them is not some motivational seminar. It's by us doing our homework every day. And so what I recommend doing them is when you're in front of that mirror, brushing your teeth, putting your deodorant on, slapping your moisturizer on, and if you are makeup wearer, <laughs> but that whole entire time you're saying, I'm going to be awesome today. I'm going to be amazing. Because every single woman on the planet, the beautiful Miss Universe, to the newscaster, to the stay-at-home mom, to the businesswoman who's like, I don't even know what to do with my mascara, has all the same issues of poopy talk in her head, not thinking she measures up. Yeah. And he who is stinky wants us to feel isolated like we're the only one that has the pain and the fears and the hurt that we do. But that's just how he minimizes the power that we have to love and truly give our heat of other people. And as long as we are distracted into something that's not important, and again, makeup artist, image consultant talking here, what I look like is not nearly as important as who I am. And exactly. we know this as mom because, you know, we tell our children they're amazing and delightful. We don't say, wow, you really, you know, your hair wasn't washed well enough. You probably shouldn't feel good about yourself, <laughs> right? We don't say things like that to our kids. No. But we allow those messages to come to us, and over time, they accidentally, to our core, will come out. Yeah. Well, and um, to do with your kids, too, I'm horrible at self-talk. And in fact, I beat myself up out in the open. And I have noticed, I mean, and maybe that's an attention getting thing or something, you know, some subconscious thing that I do to have people around me go, oh, no, 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 you're wonderful. But because I do that, I've noticed my children are starting to do that about themselves. And I really realize that if I don't change that about myself and stop beating myself up out, especially out in the open, but I'm sure yeah. it, I'm sure it comes out in other ways, you know, little comments that I say, oh, I could never do that or I couldn't, you know, I'm sure it comes out that way, too. But I've noticed that it, because if, if I don't change those talk, that talk with myself and what's going through my head, it's going to end up affecting my children, you know, negatively. Absolutely. And I really appreciate you being so honest because now I can I can address it, you know? Yeah. Um. The thing is, we know that all women feel this way, and you're teaching your children, and in your case, you shared with me that you have boys. I hope that doesn't, like, yeah. ruin some privacy thing you've got going <laughs> nope. But, um, nope, I do have one girl, so... Okay, I... okay, one girl, okay. So you're teaching your boys how to respect women, and you're teaching your daughter how to respect herself. Ugh, ooh, right? Yeah. And the question is, when you... I loved how you said that you say these insults to yourself, and you want maybe to get attention for other people to say... Oh, no, you're great, right? Yeah, exactly. Have all of those validations received from outside sources changed your talk, your no. self-talk? And in some ways, exactly. I think it makes it worse, you know. <laughs> because nobody can validate us into liking us. Yeah, that's true. We've almost become entitled thinking, you know, how many likes I get on Facebook or how much attention I'm getting is somehow the measurement of our self-worth. Yeah, that's and a real problem in our society. You know that. Oh, it's a huge problem, and we don't want to teach our children that it's about that. And so this exercise that I'm doing is for me. I am giving me all the validation, all the acceptance, all the empowerment that I need at the start of my day. And I, I explain, and you know, my tagline of my business is spend enough time on yourself in the morning. Yeah, you're going to put yourself together physically, but mentally. So spend enough time on yourself in the morning to forget about yourself the rest of the day. Oh, I love that. that because we as women, we love, we serve, we give, and we give, and then we give, and then we're like, why am I doing all of the work around here? And then we hate ourselves because we <laughs> nagged, and we're naggy hags, and then we're like, see, I really am as bad as I think. And it becomes this cycle of self-deprecation, and it's just because we're worn out and we're tired, and we never filled our emotional bucket. Yeah. And you know, we we've heard the saying, you can't give from an empty bucket, but we sure try. Yeah. We sure try. So 
so what's so wrong or what's so we had this idea of vanity like laying ourselves on the altar of motherhood sacrificing ourselves for the common good <laughs> but you know if, if a woman's not willing to do this positive self-talk vanity prayer for herself do it for your children because it would break your heart to see your daughter say some of the things you say yeah and it's never too late to change our languaging and how we think unless we think it's too late right yeah exactly your kids are still moldable you can still you can still screw them up or fix them right <laughs> you know yeah. and having this habit will retrain those neural pathways and at night i ask myself three questions as i'm taking off my makeup and you know getting in my comfortable pajamas right <laughs> i ask myself three questions have i honored myself have I honored those who depend upon me? And have I honored my God? And that is not saying, did I do everything perfect today? It's, did I do the best I could? And then in a loving, kind, like kind of putting my arms around me, I see what I needed to do to do better. But I do not berate myself. And here's, here's the thing. Women, will, I've had a lady say to me one time, and whenever this happens, I just think it's hilarious. They go, you know, you're not that hot. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, wow, your poopy talk came out. And I'm like, it's not a competition. There's not a limited scarcity of hotness or happiness or success, right? Yeah, that's and for sure. And by me thinking that I am amazing, by me thinking that I am hot, does that take away from Rebecca's hotness? Oh, no. Or huh? any of the other <laughs> listening on this call? No. We're all, we all have the potential to be hot. And the thing is, as we share the heat and let others be drawn to our unique brand of beauty and hotness and self-worth and gifts and talents, every fire is a little different, and every fire is mesmerizing. mesmerizing. That gives others permission to fill in their own heat. They've actually done studies where if a husband says to his wife, you look great, and, he sa and she says, oh, this old thing, or what are you talking about, or why you just want to have sex with me. Right? Yep. What it says, to the, and Rebecca's like, yep, that, <laughs> I have been guilty of that. Um, what it says to the man is that your love, honey, to the husband, is not enough to make me feel beautiful. It's not enough to make me feel enough. Wow. Now, our primary need as women is security. Men's primary need is food and the other thing. <laughs> Keep it at G rated, right? <laughs> And they're not just flirting with us because of that, but they know in their hard wiring that they need to provide us with security in order to get those things. And it's just everybody, everybody's need is fulfilled. We get security, they get the other thing, everybody's happy. But we cut them off at the pass. Yeah. Because yeah. we cannot hear their compliments. And one of the challenges that I give women is your yes to your vanity prayers. And the next thing, notice that when people give you compliments, do you receive them? Because eventually, if you reject people's compliments enough, they'll stop giving them. Yeah, because they, they just know that you'll never believe what they say anyway. So, And then you're like, well, my husband never compliments me. Well, maybe <laughs> it's because you cut him off at the pass. <laughs> maybe. You yeah. know, men do not spend the time thinking about relationships that we do. They're not that complicated. And I'm not saying men are simple because I love men and this is not yeah. a bashing conversation. That's, that's what I love about men is that they are simple. So if I yeah, had to deal with the, myself. <laughs> we're the complicated ones, right? Yeah. But that's, you know, part of our charm and beauty. But we are the ones that can turn a man's head and turn his mind. And if we, my husband, he says I look great, doesn't matter what I'm wearing. I'm like, mm-hmm, you noticed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And so when he's flirting with me, I'm willing to receive that. And it just makes everything work better. Yeah. And I feel beautiful. And not just physically beautiful, but I feel like I'm radiant. I feel hot. Yeah. And like I'm the total package. And my son opens doors for women. That's he's great. 12, and he's learning to respect women in a way that I couldn't just teach him with my lectures. Yeah, that's He's true. He's learning by my example that I respect myself, and therefore women are to be respected. And my daughter is nine, and she's almost ten, and she still is, you know, dressing herself in a variety of fashion things. And I love that she hasn't gotten caught up in 
trying to be a certain way and that she thinks she's beautiful and amazing and smart and talented and can do anything and I'm going to be a writer one day just like you mom and I'm like yes you can instead of the messages that I received that I would never be enough and I would never be loved yeah but the thing is I was received those messages and we all have but yeah. I'm the one responsible for repeating them and I chose to discount those messages as from he who was stinky and to tap into what he who was awesome my God, my father believes about me. Yeah. Before we go on, let us take a minute and hear about our sponsors. Hey, Firestarters. This is Mark, producer of The Luminous Mind. If you're like me, the thought of going out to the store and shopping is enough to make you want to crawl in a hole and hide. If that's you, then do your shopping online through Amazon. Just go to theluminousmind.net, click on the Amazon link, and shop away. Also, most of the books and resources that Rebecca and her guests discuss can be found on our Amazon links as well. Again, if you're like me, you have already accidentally signed up for Amazon Prime. So most of those purchases should have free shipping as well. Good luck! the luminous mind with a hotness message from Lita Green. So what are some successes that you've seen when people start to do these types of things? Well, I've seen ladies lose 70 pounds. One of my favorites is a lady came back to me and she said, when I met with you for a makeover, I thought you were a weirdo. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I came to have a makeover and you're talking about all this positive stuff. (laughs) And she goes, but I thought, why not try out the crazy ladies thing? And she, and this is, you know, (laughs) probably about a year or so after our original meeting, she said, it's turned my marriage around. Oh, wow. And she goes around telling everybody how I saved her marriage. And I'm like, I didn't. You did. I'm not the one that was in her bathroom every day telling her to do the work. You know, and the thing about, you know, being a, a guru of a certain line of thinking is it's not about what I did. It's about the individual who picks up basic skill sets that you all have heard of before. I mean, no one has ever talked about positive thinking Ever, ever, ever before. (laughs) You're the first one. (laughs) First one, ever, right? It's just, we're already, as women, we're so busy. Yes, it would be wonderful to go into my spa room that has the Zen music, and there's no noise and distractions that ever happen in there because it is my peaceful place, and be in perfect meditation. (laughs) Not realistic. Yeah, you have someone. I have kids. Little fingers under the door. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. And I joke they're like a pack of seagulls from Nemo, you know, you know, and it's like <laughs> all those little people. But, you know, I do have to brush my teeth and I do have to put deodorant on and I recommend skincare. Right. <laughs> those are basic minimum requirements that most of us, even with a newborn baby, will manage. Yeah. Hopefully. At least deodorant. <laughs> and toothpaste. Hopefully. An occasional During shower. During at least that two minutes. That's when I multitask. And I had a man tell me one time that multitasking was a myth. And I said, that lets me know you don't have a uterus. <laughs> because we women can multitask simple activities. And brushing your teeth is not a, okay, now getting the back molar. You know, <laughs> this is a simple activity. We can multitask to say, I choose to see me in the best light today. I choose to be kind to myself. I am talented. I am smart. I am wonderful. And then we're filling that bucket, and over time, when we're pushed, what's going to come out of us is what we put in. And it could be the negative, or it could be the positive. Wow. But whenever I have a thought that comes at me that I believe is from he who is thinking, who is there to minimize me, who is the heart and power of my home. I mean, if mommy's sad, the whole house falls yeah, apart. Yeah. If mommy's sick, my husband is like, there's where's the dinner and... <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like, you have two hands. I mean, that's all constructive, right? You know, when we are down and out, our families feel the price of that. So how can we be so selfish as to not be kind to ourselves? Yeah, exactly. And so I use it in language of thinking about other people, but we do have to take that time. You know, Jesus told his followers, love thy neighbor as thyself yeah. with the assumption that we loved ourselves yeah. and now we're being told that that's selfish that that's vain 
well, people be a little vain so you can be a little bit more loving. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I love that thought, you know, as you were saying, you know, when you're down and out, it's what's going to come out and thinking about how if you do feel positive, just how different the world would be, you know, how much of a change we would see just in that one, just with that one exercise that you do, uh, where hopefully our self esteem is better. And we're not saying mean comments to each other. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And you know, we're all going to have hard events happen in our lives. I mean, you know, I know you never have, Rebecca. <laughs> I never have, right? Um, but, you know, this is a great way to be psychologically preparing, um, you know, building up our mental strength so that we're the person that when those hard times come, we face them with, in a way that our children can watch with pride. Yeah. And that well, we can teach them resilience. Well, and it does create leadership. I've talked a lot on my program about how because we're choosing to do something different, that puts us in kind of a leadership. You know, we always have people ask us questions. So when you're positive and then you're doing something different on top of it, it does, it creates such a great leadership and helping people. So, you know, you could put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and none of the crabs will escape. You know why? Why? The other crabs will pull the other ones that are above them down. Oh, wow. And so when we do things that are different, sometimes there are people that don't realize they're being crabbed. And that's what moves us into being a leader. But it's an awkward transition if you see yourself in a minimalistic light. Yeah. If you see yourself as weird, (laughs) you know. Right. And I hope we're all a little weird. Yeah. I don't want to be normal. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) I don't either. I, I really... I really don't want to be normal. I mean, normal is divorce, you know, (laughs) normal is, you know, in poverty, right? I don't, I don't want to be normal. I want to be happy. I want to be one of those weird, happily married couples that hold hands and is married for 80 years or something ridiculous, right? Yeah. That's the dream, not, you know, we get so self-focused into thinking that our own needs don't meet up with other people's and we have to take care of ourselves. You know, vanity prayers are not about being selfish. It's really about taking care of you so you can take care of others. Yeah. And, you know, for your, your listeners that are overachievers, that's my first inclination when I think of a <laughs> homeschooling mom. I'm like, wow, overachiever. I just know right there she's smarter than I am, you know, just right there. And then I have to be like, okay, no, I'm smart in different ways. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) You know, then I just include that in my nightly vanity prayers. She's smart. I'm smart. We're all smart. It's okay. Uh, That, you know, you're being pulled in all these different directions. What an ability to say, wow, look at me. Look what I'm doing. This is great. It's just all how we look at it. Yeah. Well, and and feeling frazzled and failing instead of just taking a step back and going, man, wow, this is great. I can do amazing things. Yeah. This is how we choose to look at it. Well, you talked about as women, we do tend to compare ourselves with other women. And so you're saying with that poopy talk when we're like, wow, well, she's got it all together and her house looks amazing and she homeschools or, you know, she, oh, she, how can she be so pretty and all, always put together? And you're saying when we feel those thoughts, that's when we need to draw on that positive stuff that we've hopefully put in our brains earlier. Right. Well, the thing is, we all put effort into what's important to us. And some people, the most important thing to them is having a clean house. Maybe it's how they have sanity. You know, I like having a clean home because I have so much ADD that if it's not clean, I can't focus. Yeah. Right. Like I'm sitting here looking at a little piece of lint on my carpet and I've looked at it four different times in this interview. Um, But other women run for their sanity. You know, we all have different things, Yeah, you know, true. and instead of looking at that public trait in the other woman and saying, wow, I don't measure up, there's somewhere else that she's looking at you going, wow, I don't measure up. Yeah. But we tend to compare and contrast ourselves to what we perceive to be the best in others to our worst in us. Yeah, that's for sure. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, these women who are being these, you know, stay at home, homeschooling moms, well, if the lady has six hours of her kids gone, yeah, she might be able to keep her house a little bit cleaner. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to to keep mounding all these uh, different expectations on yourself and seeing where you're failing, where really you're succeeding, but you're just not willing to see it. Yeah. And I, by I, retraining your perception, you start seeing things more real. Yeah. I have to tell you a funny story. I live in an area and go to a church where there are a lot of just really talented people. And one day I signed up to, we were having this Valentine's Day dance, and every lady was supposed to come and decorate these tables. And it was Uh supposed to be, and I show up, and here I am like with paper cups. (laughs) 
<laughs> and with, you know, paper napkins and this tiny little centerpiece. And I walked in and luckily I had my 15 year old there. He, you know, we just stopped in our tracks because it was like every table was this immaculate, just beautifully done, you know, looked like a professional designer had came in and arranged the floral and fine china all over. And and we just looked at it and he just turned to me and was like, Mom, none of these other mothers homeschool. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. oh, so, so that was great. Your son could stop some poopy beliefs right in their tracks, yeah. right? He knew exactly what I was thinking because we just totally stopped and like, oh my gosh. And, but I've never signed up to do that since. <laughs> well, I, I don't think in your neighborhood you should, evidently. I'd be like, um, let's assign some people five tables, you know, so they can use up all their china. All that energy and, that they've got. <laughs> Let's get and it out. We all right have, now. you know, different skills and abilities. And, you know, as a young girl, my grandma used to tell me that nobody ever wanted to hear me talk. Oh, my goodness. And the funny thing is, people pay me as a speaker to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you got the last I laugh. My, I make my living <laughs> off of talking and connecting with people. You know, we see a trait in the, the perspective of what we're taught that trait means. But God, who has a different perspective than we do, that might be the very trait about you that he uses for his purposes. Yeah. Because my ability to talk was made fun of, was minimized, was pointed out to me an example of how not smart I was. But yet I have been able to impact thousands of people all around the country and the world, and I'm just getting going because of my ability to talk. That is what God is using in me. Yeah. But I didn't get to see that until my late 30s, you know, as a speaker. But wasn't I talking before, connecting with women as a makeup artist, an image consultant, and loving and connecting with them and teaching them about vanity prayers? But I didn't see it because yeah. I was taught that that was not a valuable skill because I couldn't put it on a stage because I didn't play an instrument, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I believed as a 15-year-old girl, there was a talent show in our, our, in our church group for our, you know, the youth, and all of the girls had to put something on the stage. And we could not think of a single thing of the whole entire family it was a meeting we couldn't think of anything that lita had to contribute as a talent oh my so goodness. eventually what we did was dad stood up there dad was a truck driver he had a mobile home moving company where mom was the other driver and we were the work crew <laughs> and he stood up there with the tire and i changed that tire and that was my talent oh wow and you know now i don't even really consider that a talent and it's not a skill i get to use anymore men always come to change my tires and i don't <laughs> tell them what they're doing wrong I just, let them do it. <laughs> you know, but I believed I was talentless. But here's the thing. When I say the word vanity prayers, it's kind of a pun, isn't it? It's kind of a play on words. We think vanity is bad, but yet we live in the world. We have to deal with the world, and we have to look good enough to have that first impression of hygiene work for us, <laughs> right? Yes. We, we got to look good enough because that reflects people make judgments about us. We don't have to spend hours doing it, but we just have to look good enough. And I can help any of your ladies that want through Skype. That's what I do. Plus, I have my book, which gives image and psychology tips, how to embrace your inner hotness, which they can find at LitaGreen.com. But the thing is, we have this idea that we are not enough, where really maybe we just haven't top, tapped into what God sees in us. Yeah. There's a spiritual component, and that's why I say vanity prayers. We have to connect with the source of awesome daily, if not multi-daily. I know for what life's hurdles have given me, that is only through the grace and goodness of God that I am who I am. Yeah. I have gone through my husband having a massive heart attack and dying in my arms, coming back to life, so my husband's still living, oh, and wow. I buried a child. Wow. And I could take another hour sharing what God taught me through her. But my daughter had this really interesting trait where she looked everybody in the eyes. She was not distracted by lights or things around us. She was looking right into our eyes. And it kind of kind of wigged people out a little bit because it was weird. <laughs> and one time a nurse said to me, you know, something special about Caitlin. And I didn't want to hear what she was saying because I wanted Caitlin to be normal. But when Caitlin looked in my eyes, it filled me up because she was taking the time that she had here to invest and what was really important, people, mm. connecting with people. And so she knew, because she had just, just been with God, what was really important about us. Yeah. Well, the and soul that's inside, and, not all of this stuff. Yeah. And I definitely believe that, that God values each one of us, loves us all different, and loves us, loves the weirdness about us, you know, loves that's, that we that's are. What, that's what he's going to make great about us. The yeah. weirdness is what is great about us. 
Yeah. So like you said, whenever you're hearing that, it's definitely not coming from God because that's not, he doesn't value, you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't have a price tag on your head and goes, well, I'll only love you if you can, you know, have gorgeously curly hair, or, you know, something like that. So maybe you have gorgeously straight hair, but just learn to love what you are. And like I said, in my book, I have 15 steps of how to walk people through their vanity prayers into feeling better about themselves. But you know, you don't have to buy my book to tap into God's perspective of you. And if you listen to him more than other messages, your brain will get retrained. Yeah, that's great. Well, before we say goodbye, I feel bad I've taken so much of your time. But before we say goodbye, do you have any... Well, I've had a good time. Have you not had a good time? <laughs> I have had a very good time. <laughs> like I said, check out her TED Talks because it is just hilarious. That's why I laughed most of the time just because I was just picturing how you were saying that. <laughs> you know, how you were brushing your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Spitting it out. It's so funny. But before well, they can look up my YouTube talks and, you know, they can connect with me and my, my name is spelled L E T A green like the color with an E on the end. I'm easy to find. Okay. So yeah, before we say goodbye, um just give us like your favorite quote and then can you just reiterate all your contact information and how they can connect with you? Yes. So um, obviously my favorite quote is spend enough time with yourself in the morning to forget about yourself the rest of the day. And as a man thinketh, or as a chicky babe thinketh, is what (laughs) defines her and puts her in her proper frame of her true hotness. So I hope that all of your your listeners will be able to embrace their hotness and realize that their own unique heat is unique and given of God. And that as they share that with those around them, especially their children and their husbands, that they will become aware of their own unique gifts. So my name is Lita, um, L-E-T-A. And green, like the color with an E on the end. And I'm the really hot lady with brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and check her stuff out. Like I said, it's been fun just for me studying her <laughs> and and, see, and then talking to her. is just hilarious. So thank you so much for joining us. And I really appreciate it. Well, awesome. I look forward to serving your listeners in any way that they feel that they need me. Great. So. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for your time <laughs> and for you. the listeners' time. Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind. To learn more about Lita Green, go to our website, theluminousmind.net. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Google+. Get our audio content by subscribing in iTunes as well as YouTube. Let us know what we can do to help you. Help us to continue to light minds on fire and change the paradigm of education. 